This presentation, MD Economics, was created to provide information about loan repayment options to current medical school graduates. It was created by the FIRST for Medical Education program at the AAMC. The FIRST program provides financial information, resources, services, and tools to those trying to understand the complexities of medical student debt. The AAMC is the Association of American Medical Colleges. Let's get started. Let's move past the residency and consider the economics of loan repayment once Dr. Median reaches practice. Let's go back to door number two. Here, Dr. Median chose forbearance during the residency and then a 25-year repayment plan. That resulted in a monthly payment of $1,500 on the loans. Is that feasible? Suppose Dr. Median chose family practice without OB. That's one of the lower paying medical specialties for the specialties with which we have data. For example, in 2007, the data for the median salary one to two years in the family practice specialty is about $147,000. Because Dr. Median graduated in 2008 and did a four year residency, she won't begin practicing until the year 2012. Based on the growth rate of family practice data over the last few years, we would project the family practice median salary early in the profession to be about $165,000. Once you take away federal, state, and local, and payroll taxes, about 37%, you get roughly $8,700 a month. What does the monthly loan payment look like in that context? So here's a sample monthly budget for the year 2012 for Dr. Median. Each bar shows the percentage of the monthly income on that particular item with the amounts tacked on at the end. You'll see the student loans of $1,500 is about 17% of the budget. The rent or mortgage is over a third of the budget, about $3,000. That's roughly equivalent to about a $400,000 mortgage, which is not quite the same as a $400,000 house. We'll assume Dr. Median has a little bit of credit card debt from her time during her residency and wants to get rid of that quickly. If you pay $500 a month, on a credit card and you had about $5,000 in credit card debt, it'll be gone in about 10 and a half months at 15% interest. Dr. Meany is also saving for her own retirement and putting some money in savings. The car is about a $20,000 car financed at five years, 7% interest, a used car. Discretionary money is about $250 a week. That's to cover a lot of the items that you might think of that aren't listed on this budget. And food, utilities, insurance, and health costs, as well as a cell phone. This budget is not intended to be perfect, but it is trying to be reasonable and practical and show how a student loan repayment will fit in the context context of a doctor's salary. You'll remember that Dr. Median by this stage is a single 30-year-old female. You might not think that's reasonable if you're a family person. So here's what the budget looks like if you have children. You can do it, but they take everything. I have two of my own. I love them dearly. They are many, many things, but inexpensive is not one of them. This slide's mostly a joke, so let's move on. If you typically see the glass as half empty, you might be wondering to yourself, is it worth it in the long run? Why put yourself through all these years of school in order to repay all of this debt? The short answer is yes, but let's take a few slides to see why we say that. Here's the graph showing Dr. Median's medical school debt side of the ledger. It repeats a lot of the totals we've talked about previously. By the time Dr. Median graduates from medical school, the total balance owed is a little over $171,000. Dr. Median, if she chooses forbearance during residency, and the residency is four years, faces a balance of about $222,000 after the residency. Then, choosing a 25-year extended repayment plan, Dr. Median will pay $1,500 a month for 25 years and be debt-free by age 55. Now let's look at the savings side. Suppose when she starts practice, Dr. Median saves about 2% of her annual salary every year for the first 10 years from 30 to 39. Then at 40, she starts saving about 10% of her salary a year. This is what the savings line looks like. We're cutting off here at about age 52 when the balance is about $750,000, but it edges over a million by 55. This all assumes about an 8% average annual return on her savings. Now let's think about Dr. Median's twin sister. She graduates from college at age 22 in the year 2004 with a BS in finance. She starts working right away, earning an annual salary of about $40,000. After a few years, she starts saving about 5% of her salary, say 25 to 34 years old, 5% a year. Then, from 35 until retirement, she saves 10% of her annual salary. 
So compared to Dr. Median, she has compound interest working for a few more years, though her salary is quite a bit lower. What do you think her savings line looks like? Is it higher or lower than Dr. Median's? And here you see the results of that hypothetical experiment. The twin sister is ahead until about age 42, when they're roughly equal at about $145,000 in savings. And then Dr. Median's salary kicks in, and her savings rate increases, and she far surpasses where the twin sister is. This is not to discount her twin sister, who has roughly 600000 at age 55. Not a bad safety net indeed. This slide plays things out to retirement at age 65. Even though there's no picture, you can clearly see that Dr. Median has about twice the savings as her twin sister. Roughly $3 million compared to $1.5 million. This data is really just based on a simple exercise done with an Excel spreadsheet using the different starting salary points and a few percentages. But it really shows the impact the MD salary has on the lifetime and the financial decisions that go with that lifetime for Dr. Median. It really is a good news story for Dr. Median. She repays a significant sum that she borrowed to attend medical school, yet still has enough to amass a comfortable savings at retirement. Thank you for sticking through this entire presentation. We hope it's provided a little bit of insight and use to you. Don't forget to check out our website, aamc.org slash first. It has a wealth of useful material about all things financial aid. You can also email us with your questions or comments at first at aamc.org. Thank you and good luck with your financial decisions in your medical school career.